Some people have this idea that someday they will just walk into shop right. And they will like want to buy something. They will have made the shopping. It's time for them to pay. And they, they forgot their card. And this guy just walked up and said, Salaam alaikum. <laughs> you forgot something. And he said, yes, actually, I forgot. He will say, D -d don't bother. And then the guy like pay with his own credit card. And when you step out, you discover you had flat tire. And the guy said, don't worry, I'll call my boys to come and fix it for you. And the guy like, please, please, me, like, join me in this um, ride. I may be going the same direction you are going. And the guy like went to drop you at home and said, I just returned from a journey. I'm actually based in UK. And um, here I am. I'm only here in Nigeria because I just feel I need to marry a Nigerian lady. And um, can we be friends? And you're like, Allah Akbar. <laughs> Get real, sister. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes expect destiny to bring their husbands or wives to them. You see, destiny is quite busy doing so many other things. You've got the men you could marry, you've got the ladies you could marry, you attend the same programs all to, together, and you are still there making dua that Allah should show you who to marry. You've got the Muslim lady, this one has, Allah Akbar, this, this lady doesn't just walk, she flows. She's so pretty and beautiful. Butterflies will perch on her thinking she's a flower. She's got the deed. She's got the things that you need for the deed. And you are still there making dua. And while you are still there philosophizing and doing very long istikhara, one other brother will come around, grab her, and then you will be the first to be given the invitation card. And then on somebody else's wedding day, you begin to cry. Make up your mind. Sometimes it's your personal choice. Make up your mind. Don't expect things to be the way of your desire. Fantasies don't always go with reality. If there's a lady, talk to her. Express what you want. If there's a brother, find a way around it. You don't teach a thief how to lie. I can't teach sisters how to do it. They know how to get whoever they set to get. If the dean is complete, if what you want is okay, go ahead. It is sooner. Find ways of being compatible as much as possible. Look at the characters. And above all, avoid falling in love. Do not fall in love. Falling is not such a nice thing. You can break your neck. Falling doesn't really feel good when you fall. Stand in love. Stand in love. Look for the mawadda. Look for the qualities. And then put your trust in Almighty Allah. How do you go about this? Getting married sometimes is like buying a, a shoe, a pair of shoes. What do you consider in buying shoes? What do you consider? Sometimes it's the cost. You want to buy an expensive shoe. Sometimes you want to get a fanciful shoe. Sometimes fashionable. Sometimes comfortable. Which is best? Expensive, fanciful, fashionable, or comfortable? Comfortable. Yes, when you do that, when you get the comfortable one, you are lucky because when you wear shoes, you can't get it off every time. There are some moments you can't remove your shoes and walk barefooted. Getting the spouse of your choice, guessing your Mr. Right is like getting the size of your shoes. If you got the one that is too small, it's going to squeeze your feet. And when that happens, you begin to sweat even when there is cold. You begin to squeeze your face. You begin to make funny faces. You become restless. You feel some pains you can't complain about. But what if the shoes are too big? Well, you can stuff it up. You can stuff it up with tissue papers. You can stuff it up with papers. You can stuff it up with stuff, with things, so that at least it's not going to pull off your feet. 
Some shoes are designed for leisure when you want to walk free. Some shoes are designed when you want to look fashionable. Fashionable and comfortable may not always go together. Get the shoes of your size. Get the one that is for you. You don't go about and say, look, those sisters, they are too materialistic. Get a lady of your size. There was a time when a rat was looking um, for a wife. And this rat moved around and found a camel, a red camel. And this rat said, now that I've set my eyes on you, I would rather die with you than live without you. I want to marry you. And then the camel said, well, if you want to marry me, you've got to show me to your parents. If they approve, then we can marry. Then the rat pulled the rein of the camel, and they went and about to enter into the hole of the rat. And the rat realized that the camel wouldn't fit into the hole. While the rat was making the effort to see how to drag the camel into the hole, the camel said, let me advise you. Either get a rat of your size or get a bigger hole. We are not compatible. Some of these are so obvious, but people don't like to look at the obvious. When you buy a shoe, look at it very well and ensure that it's the one that you can do with, is the one you can deal with, is the one that's actually your own size, as the case may be. Then step two, readiness for marriage. Are you ready? If we ask now, all single ladies should stand up, all single brothers should stand up, go ahead and marry yourselves. You see, it's not going to work. Are you really ready? Are you physically ready? Are you matured physically? Do you have mental maturity for marriage? Are you psychologically prepared for marriage? Are you ready to take up responsibilities as a man, as the leader, when Allah says, Al-Rijal Kuwamun Ala Nisa, men are the maintainers of women. Can you maintain yourself? Talk less of maintain a woman. As the leader, as the follower, are you ready to be a spender? Bima fadolla badum ala badin wa bima anfaku mina mualihim. Can you spend? Do you have something to spend? As a manager, can you manage? As a communicator, can you communicate? Can you speak women? It's a language on its own. And can you speak men? Have you learned how to speak men? These are exceptionally important. Well, do you have the freedom to get married? Have you freed yourself? Have you accepted yourself? Have you known that you are actually not perfect, but you are complete the way you are? Thirdly, what of the health considerations? Have you considered the health part of marriage? Physical health, matters of genotype, matters of being handicapped, or being deaf or blind in one form or the other. The deaf community, who marries them? Have you considered them? The blind community, they also need to marry. It's not all about all of us here alone. I've looked around. I didn't see anybody walking in with walking stick. Did we say they shouldn't come? They are Muslims too. Why weren't they invited? He is doing this job because of those who may not hear what we say. But the ummah is much wider than that. Then, what of the mental health? I hope the person you want to marry is not a psychopath. Can a mad person marry? Can someone with Down syndrome marry? Can an autistic person marry? How will they get married? Are you going out with someone with the right akida? Are you trying to marry someone with the right perception of woman, the right perception of marriage, the right perception of life itself? the right perception of what it means to be a human being. Have you noticed some of the red flags that should make you to know that this is not the person you should marry? What are some of these red flags? You see, you've not married somebody yet and is, is, is never talking about your future. 
He is never bothered, never concerned about what happens to you in your future. Are you trying to marry someone who is petty, someone who is shallow, someone who is not deep, someone who only discusses surface things? Red flag. If you found somebody already, does he share the same core values as you do? Does he have the same life goals like yours? What of his dean? How does he do it? Does he attend programs like you do? Or he has only come to the program to take you out and that's all? Somebody who is not disciplined with the opposite sex. Somebody who cannot look away when he sees ladies. Or ladies who cannot keep mouth, their mouth shut when they see men. Hey, tell me, what kind of a person puts password on his phone? What kind of a man does that? And what kind of a woman reads somebody's messages? Do you trust one another? <laughs> I'm just wondering. You've not married somebody, he's already slapping you. Anything you say, pua. And then when he does that, they say, oh, sister, sorry, what happened to you? She will say, I fell in the bathroom. You are covering up for him. He's already beating you. He's already going violent. And you still say you love him. You can see some of these red flags. Don't fall into it. You are speaking to somebody and the person is hanging the phone up on you. You've not even married yet. He's hanging off. He's walking away because he's angry. He's refusing to pick your calls for three days because he's angry. Watch it, sister. That's a very serious red flag there. You've not married someone and the person is shutting the door with a slam on you because he or she is angry. That's a very serious red flag. The problem is people don't change. He's not going to change and she's not going to change. You've not married someone yet but he always goes for nuclear option during an argument. It's as if I either win or we die. Over what? You are not married yet. That's a very serious red flag there for you. And guess what? You want to marry somebody who can lie about anything and everything. Somebody who you will say, good morning, and you have to check to be sure. It's actually morning time. Somebody who lies. Lie, liar. Liars don't change. Somebody who can lie can steal. Somebody who can steal can lie. Somebody who is already isolating you from other people. Somebody who is downplaying your accomplishments, accomplishments and your efforts. Someone who is prone to malice. Someone who will never compliment you. He will never say thank you. He will never say you look good. He will never say I love you. He will never say, I'm sorry. That's a very serious red flag. Somebody who is a drama king or a drama queen, beware, that's a red flag. Someone who is already, Allah Akbar, who is so arrogant and someone who is yet to grow up, keep away from such persons and begin to learn the wisdom of a serious relationship based on the love and mercy that we mentioned earlier on. And let me tell you another tool you need in your search for Mr. or Mrs. Wright, or if you have got one. The right and adequate information, deep understanding of how things work, wisdom on how marriage works. I've always explained this. The bicycle has two wheels. One wheel in the front, the other one behind. Of these two wheels, which of them is more important? The one in the front, is one to which the direction is, is attached. The one behind is one to which the pedal is attached. It gives movement to the bicycle. Which of them is more important? Can anybody tell me? The one in the front is more important than the one in the back. Which of them is the man? Which of them is the woman? The one behind is, is the woman. The one in the front is, is the man. So which of them is more important? 
There's nothing like both are more important. <laughs> Which of them can do without the other? Which of them can do without the other one? None of them can do without the other one. If it's the lady that's behind, she's got to learn to stay where she is. If it's the man that's in the front, let him learn to stay there and let each one respect each one. They must move in synchrony with one another, else there'll be friction. They must work together if the bicycle must move forward. This is how relationships work. Let one not overtake the other. Let one not be jealous of the other. Let one not look down on the other. This is how a marriage works. Let me tell you another way marriages work. There must be sincerity at all times, in all ways. We get married because we want to seek the face of Allah. It is part of the love of Allah that we want to extend that love to one another. We must ensure that we do the best of what we can with the best of all characters. And the greatest of this character I want to stress now, maybe we discuss more later. I want to ask you this question about a man who was ill, very, very ill. And um, he promised, Ya Allah, if I should get well, I'm going to sell my house and give it out in Sadaka. Oh Allah, make me to get well. And after a long time of prayers, Allah made him to get well. He regained his health. And suddenly he remembered, ah, I promised I was going to sell my house and give the proceeds out in Sadaka. On remembering that by the time he sells his house, he's going to become homeless. So he felt, what am I going to do about this matter? So he put out a bill, a signpost, a notice to say he's got a house for sale, but with one condition. You see, he had a cat in the house, and he wanted to sell both the cat and the house together so that the cat at least would not become homeless. Look at the nice man so that the cat will not become homeless. Now he says, the house is 100 naira, but the cat is 100 million. Whoever buys the house must buy the cat alongside. Somebody will come, how can you sell a house for 100 naira? Say, that's what I want to sell it for. So let me have it. Say, no, you have to buy the cat alongside. I don't want my cat to become homeless. And so because of that, somebody eventually showed up and bought the cat and the house for 100 million, 100 naira. So he collected the money. You know, he promised. So he went out with 100 naira and gave it out in Sadaka. I said, oh Allah, I fulfilled my promise. <laughs> what did he do wrong? Did he do anything wrong? What did he do wrong? Was he smart? Was he wise? Was he treacherous? Was he a 419 I don't know what your judgment would be, but is that sincerity is that how to be sincere? Is that how to be kind? If anyone cannot establish sincerity in their lives, then marrying such a person is dangerous. May Almighty Allah have mercy on us. Work on your sincerities, brothers and sisters. May Almighty Allah continue to ease our tasks. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah continue to guide us aright in all that we do.